reel in and just keep it coming up quick, coming up quick. And try not to bang it on the rocks because I have a feeling that might be an issue with that underwater camera. Now we gotta go out here to the danger zone one time just to land this camera. We're risking it all today, y'all. I got two underwater cameras. I got a metal jig here, got swim baits, and we're also gonna do bait. Everything underwater camera to see what's going on down there, see what the fish react to better. Now, I gotta say, this go fish cam or the water wolf cam, I don't know. Somebody's gotta make a better camera that gets better footage because these things, they're like from the 1990s, man. The footage that they record, but it's all we got today, so that's what we're gonna use. Hopefully we don't lose them, risking it all. See the lens of the camera? It's kind of beat up from fishing from the rocks before. Hopefully it's clear enough for today. All right, let's see what's going on under there. Metal jig, underwater camera. I have no idea how this is gonna work. <laughs> we'll find out shortly. Let's try not to let it drag bottom. That's my goal right now, just keeping it off the bottom seeing if there's any fish that want to play. I do see some kelp. I already see some kelp, which is not a good sign, but okay, right there from the bat feels, feels kind of soft, but oh, there's, that was a rock. Got snagged already. There, it came off. All right, gotta be careful, gotta be careful. Now how I expect it to work is that there should be a little flutter on the jig. As it jigs down, it should flutter very slowly. So if there's any fish around, they'll see that as a dead bait fish and they'll come and grab it because, gosh, it looks so enticing, doesn't it? Oh man, you got tangled up here. That wasn't even fishing. All right, cast number two. Now I got these treble hooks on, so if anything were to bite it, it's almost certainly gonna get hooked. And with these jigs, you don't necessarily have to jig bottom. You can jig it near the middle because that's where a lot, oh, there's fish. Oh, fish? Oh, just a snag, dang. Felt like a fish for a second. All right, it's risky over here. There's a lot of rocks right here. But we're risking it all today, right? We're risking it all. Let's see what's in this little crack. So I cast right in between this channel here. I'm gonna do that a few times and hopefully we don't get snagged, but there could be fish in there. There could be blacks, there could be blues, there could be lings, there could be cabs, there could be verms, there could be reds, there could be canaries, there could be a lot of stuff in there. Gophers, grassies, a lot of options. Chinas, black and yellows, all types of fish that could be in there. Oh, man, that felt like a fish, dude. God, this camera really throws things off. That was the jig underwater. Let's switch it to the swim bait. I'm really interested to see how bait does. This is what we're switching to. Kind of a white, light blue swim bait with a weedless rig. And of course, on top of that, the camera. Let's do it. Now, hopefully this swim bait is in position of the camera where it can get a good view. But after I do the bait, after this swim bait, about five, six cast, I'll do the bait. If we don't get any fish, we're gonna switch spots completely. Try again somewhere else. Cause you know, sometimes you can just fish it all day and there might not be any fish here whatsoever. So we're giving it a fair opportunity, swim in the bait, swim bait and jig in all the same areas. Just so there's an even chance. And this way you can see how the swim bait works and how the jig works. With the swim bait, I'm trying to get it right there near the bottom. I'm not necessarily trying to jig it, although you can, but I'm trying to swim it near the bottom. Uh-oh. That don't feel good. That could be a, a, a camera snag. Uh-oh, that's scary. I'm scared now. 
I'm scared now, dude. I feel like the camera is stuck. I gotta at least give it my best and go over here. Go over here at another angle, try to get it off over here. Oh, I got it. I got it free. Thank goodness. Thank goodness I got it. Got it free. Luckily, the camera wasn't lost. But that's a demonstration on why I'm starting to prefer the metal jig more than the swim bait. Because with the swim bait, you're basically keeping it near the bottom with the straight retrieve, almost dragging it. But with the jig, you're bouncing it, bouncing it, bouncing it. You're almost always in contact. You know where the floor is and you can raise it up as you need to. Uh, try to tie on one more swim bait. Damn it, snagged again on the swim bait, dude. Shoot. Ah, just dragging it. It's just so hard to feel the bottom. Okay, got it free. Got it free. There's another spot over there that looks pretty darn fishy. I feel like this spot a lot of people hit. I'm gonna go over there. Let's try bait, but we'll also bring a jig and a swim bait to try over here on this corner. Take a look at this. I was just about to move to another spot, but this is why I don't recommend the go fish. I prefer the water wolf, even though it's so outdated, but look at this. You see that green light there? You should be able to push this red button just like this, and the green light should start blinking, and that's how you know it's recording. But look, it's not recording anymore for whatever reason. Hopefully, we got some footage at all. Now I can't do anything with this camera. This camera is just dead. Man, from over there, it looked like I could get onto that rock, but it's completely inaccessible unless I were to jump 15 feet, which is just impossible right now. So what I'm gonna do is get some muscles, and that's what we're gonna use this bait, unless I could find a fat limpid. Really slippery out here, and I don't even have too much time to fish because the waves are crashing over. Let's see if we could find something. And this hole looks really cool too. Like, look at that. Look how deep that hole is. That has got to be about 10 feet deep. Let's get a big muscle, and throw it against the rocks, and that's what we'll use as bait, right there. Actually, this one looks good too. All right, there's our muscle. And I don't wanna break my knife on this muscle, so I'm just gonna smash it on this rock And there we are, we got our bait. That's what we're gonna be using, that's the muscle. Now a lot of this is really soft, so you wanna make sure when you bait it, you get it through the tough parts. So I'm gonna do it straight through the lips and thread it on like a squid. Then when I cast out, I'll cast out gently just so it doesn't come off. There we are, baited up, and right above that, I've got this swim bait. Now this leader might be a little too long. They might hit and tangle, but I'm gonna risk it. I just wanna see if there's a lot of action on there underwater with the current flowing back and forth. And I got a three ounce weight on the bottom tied to a snap swivel. Oh, look, that snap swivel opened already. The snap swivel is only a 15 pound snap swivel, so if it gets snagged, it should break. And I'll keep the bait and I'll keep the hook, so let's cast her out. I think we only got one shot at this. So, let's do it. Let's cast this bait out ah, and cast the swim bait out. Now I just switched the swim bait to the bottom and the bait to the top. I think there's less likely chance it'll get snagged. All right, right after this wave comes, now we can go. Let's do it really fast, cast out, and then get back to safe ground. Hoya! All right, let's get back to safe ground. Just like I said, we don't have much time. All right, we'll fish it from up here. Gosh, I wish I could get onto that rock right there. That would be perfect. I don't think so though. 
So we're gonna let this camera and this underwater camera sit here for about 10 minutes and see if we get any bites. See if this swim bait going back and forth with the current attracts any fish along with the scent of that mussel. Well, been about eight, 10 minutes now. I'm gonna reel it in and try to cast out straight over there. Now let's do this fast so we stay safe. Make sure my drag is tight. Reel in and just keep it coming up quick, coming up quick. And try not to bang it on the rocks because I have a feeling that might be an issue with that underwater camera. Now we gotta go out here to the danger zone one time just to land this camera and to cast out again. So we just gotta be careful. Let's cast again, there's a seal and his baby. Let's cast out over there. That might be what's scaring the fish away. Phew! Oh no, we're snagged. Oh no. Well, hopefully it's just the weight. Uh, what's going on down here? Please don't lose the camera. Please don't lose the camera. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Dang. Woo. Let's get out of there. I lost the swim bait of all things. Wow. I wonder what happened there. Gosh, it's way more rough than I was expecting. Forecast was three foot swell at 16 seconds, eight mile an hour winds. Look how choppy it is out here. All right, I'm gonna try another spot this time. Let's go on the opposite side. Over here. Now the rocks are still wet here, so I know that it's getting splashed every once in a while. So I still gotta be careful. But now, I'm gonna cast out over here, keeping my eye on the, on the waves, casting out. Camera's going. Hopefully we get a fish. Ooh, it's windy. Oh my gosh, one thing I was meaning to tell you, tell you guys, so in June or July of this year, I want to plan something really exciting and everyone is invited. You know how they have the farmer's markets on the weekends? Well, my plan is to rent out every single booth and it's going to be a Fisherman's Life block party. Fisherman's Life block party, everyone is invited. What I'm thinking of is that I'll have a booth, we'll have food, we'll have music. If you want to get a booth, message me, but not yet because details aren't set in stone quite yet. Fisherman's Life block party in June or July. Everyone is invited. I think it's gonna be a great time. Well, if you learned one thing from this video, probably just don't buy a go fish cam. Nah, I'm just kidding. But it's too windy out here. I just can't do anything. I have no idea how that underwater footage turned out. I'll have to go home and check it out. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna do more of this when it's not so windy. I'm gonna show you why I can't fish anymore. When you look out in the ocean, you see waves breaking and white on top. Those are called white caps, if you didn't already know, and that just means that it's terrible condition. So, see you guys on the next one. And hopefully at the block party.